May I welcome you to this very pertinent uh, group of studies. It's, it's interesting how a teacher always feels that the group of studies under consideration are most important. Well, we believe these to be most important. We have a new generation of Americans today who are, are not Bible-oriented. Uh, they are converted unto God, and they love the Lord, and mostly they read the New Testament, and they do not understand the offerings and the sacrifices and the altars of the Old Testament, and that they were actually types and symbols of the great Savior that would come to save the total human race. Therefore, for you, we are, are, are giving these special talks related to the altars and the sacrifices unto the Almighty. I know that you will enjoy them very much. Uh, we have already spoken to you relating to the birth of altars and offerings unto the Most High, showing you that they began with the beginning of man, that they did not, that they were not subsequental, that they did not come in a later period, but they all began with Adam and have continued from his time. There has, there has never been a break in them, and that when the supreme altar of the Son of God on Mount uh, Calvary uh, was consummated, that all the offerings and the altars were completed. Jesus Christ said, I did not come to destroy, I came to fulfill. They were fulfilled in the Messiah. Then we spoke to you about the patriarchs, offerings and altars. It is so interesting how the, the patriarchs, one after the other, you know, followed in succession and God would reveal a new name to them at their altars, and this was certainly most exciting. And then we spoke of how God moved from an individual altar and revelation to that of a nation, to where God would say, you may offer a sacrifice, not exactly for a person, but for groups uh, such as a whole nation of Israel, and that God will remiss the sins of a nation through a sacrifice at His altar. It was certainly an enlargement, it, and it included the, the foreigners and the strangers that were in the land. Uh, they received the same remission of sins that the natives did, and this showed the great love of God, as in John 3, 16, that God loves the total world. You know, that, that the total world is in the perspective of God and that you and I are part of it. It matters not whether our eyes are blue or brown or black. Uh, we are part of the great overwhelming love of God for the total world at this time. Uh, today's lesson, we've gotten into uh, the portion now where we are going to show you the type of animals. No unclean animal was ever used as a sacrifice unto God. We see that there were four of these creatures uh, used as a burnt offering unto the Lord. Now, the, the term burnt offerings uh, to the Most High are mentioned 254 times in the Bible. And burnt sacrifices is a term that is used 17 times in the Bible. Burnt incense as a term is used 15 times in the entire Bible. The burnt offering uh, was the foundation of all the offerings that men made unto God. It was the beginning of offerings. It is first, it was also mentioned first. It comes first at all times. It is the first, it is mentioned first. Uh, the burnt offering was a daily morning and evening uh, performance in the temple. It was not once a week or once a year. It was a daily offering unto the Most High, morning and evening. Let us read something about it, please. In the book of Leviticus, uh, chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse uh, 1, we will read together. Shall we go? And Jehovah called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. God was showing them the kind of offering that they could bring unto him. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will. Now you're getting into deep doctrine, so watch it carefully. It is a male, it is a bullock, 
and it is a voluntary offering unto God. He will bring it to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before Jehovah and shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make an atonement uh, for him and his family for their sins. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord and the priest, Aaron's sons, shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar, that is, by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. This is out in the outside. And he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. Uh, uh, and uh, the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. And the priests and Aaron's sons shall lay the parts, the head, the fat, in order upon the wood that is on the fire, which is upon the altar. God gives very particular details, as you can see. Uh, but his inwards and his legs shall he wash with water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar to be in a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of his sweet savor, a sweet savor unto the Lord. And if his offering be of the flock, namely of the sheep or the goats, for a burnt sacrifice, he shall bring it a male without blemish, a male without blemish. Verse 11, and he shall kill it on the side of the altar northward, he even, you know, told them the direction to do it before the Lord and the priests. Aaron's sons shall sprinkle his blood round about upon the altar. He shall cut it into pieces with his head and with his fat, and the priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire which is before the altar. And he shall wash the inwards and the legs with water, and the priest shall bring it all and burn it upon the altar. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Verse 14 says, And if the burnt sacrifice of his offering to the Lord be of fowls, he's giving you the different things that you can bring. Then he shall bring his offering of the turtle dove or of young pigeons. And the priest shall bring it unto the altar and wring off the head and burn it on the altar. And the blood thereof shall be wrung out of the side of the altar. And he shall pluck away his crop with his feathers and cast it beside the altar on the east part by the place of the ashes. And he shall cleave it with the wings thereof, but shall not divide it asunder. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar, upon the wood that is upon the altar. It is a burnt sacrifice, it, an offering made by fire. It is a sweet savor unto the Lord. Uh, and so we are studying the burnt offering uh, of, the, of the Old Testament. The word burnt in Hebrew is oaloa and that's spelled O-H-L-O-A. It means to ascend or go up. It does not mean the same as you think burnt means uh, in, 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 in your language. It was an offering which ascended to the Most High as a fragrance unto and, and God and an acceptance of the Lord for that person. Uh, in Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 8, the word of the Lord says, uh, the Lord spoke unto Moses and said, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is the, it is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it, and the fire upon the altar shall be burning, and it shall not be put out. This was not ever to go out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it, and he shall burn thereof the fat of the of the peace offering. The fire shall be ever, shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Isn't that amazing? Now, you see, we could take these and speak on them at great length if we were going to deal into the very significance of the offerings. But you see here that this was a fire that was never extinguished. It was a fire that burnt all the time, and the offerings were brought unto God uh, by the people from all over the nation there uh, as they worshiped God in Jerusalem at the temple. First it was in the tabernacle, later it was in the, the temple. Now, the bullock was the largest offering that was brought unto God. The offering of the bullock represents Christ uh, as the enduring servant. Now, the Lord Jesus is represented in every one of these offerings that were offered. For example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 9, it says, It is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Uh, doth God take care of for oxen? That's a question. Or saith he it all together for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, it is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, or, and he that thresheth in hope should be a partaker 
of his hope. This speaks to us of the great patience of our Lord and Savior uh, and was represented in the burnt offering when a bullock uh, was offered unto Jehovah upon the altar, speaking to us of the Lord Jesus as he came to this earth. He was King of kings and Lord of lords. Uh, he was the imperial son of the Most High God. He did seat, be seated upon a throne. All things that are in the universe were made by him, and the Bible says without him was nothing made that is made. And yet he condescended to be a servant, and, and that he might come and to show this world how he could redeem them as an offering unto God. And so the beginning of the offerings uh, was also the resemblance of what was certainly going to come, the Lord Jesus Christ, and that he would be represented by this beast of burden that is a servant to mankind, and that he would come not as a Lord, not as a master, but as a servant. And, and you know by his life how he served, how he gave of himself day and night, how he blessed the poor, how he blessed the sick, how he blessed the afflicted, how he loved those that were unlovable, and how he lifted up those that had been cast down, and those that were cast clear out of the social order, he brought them back in, redeemed them, such as Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven uh, devils. And so the, uh, the bullock uh, was one of the offerings that was offered, and it speaks to us of our Lord and Savior in his enduring sacrifice uh, that he made unto the Lord. Now the Lord, uh, and, and speaking of this offering, in Leviticus 1 and 3, it says, If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, uh, let it offer a male and without blemish. Christ offered himself as the one without blemish. Uh, uh, he lived the perfect life. He lived the beautiful life. Uh, he lived the, the life that we would like to emulate. The, the life of Christ is a life that you and I can seek for, that we might live the type of life that he lived. In Hebrews 9 and 14, the Word of God says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And so Christ, uh, being the fulfillment, of that offering that was made unto God by the people of Israel for such a long time, that he came, became the fulfillment of it, and that he was accepted as the one without spot, without blemish, that was offered unto the living God. In Ephesians uh, chapter 5 and verse 2, it says, Walk in love, as Christ also loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Uh, he was offered unto God, he was received, his offering was accepted, and he became your Savior and my Savior as he was the one that took away our sins. Uh, he was the one that redeemed our sins. He's the one that gave his life. The life of the body is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And so he gave of his life. We sometimes think of blood, and some people say, oh, a bloody religion. You, you, you should forget that. Blood is life. I don't know, it's not just something you smear. Blood is life. Blood is precious. When a person gives blood, that's the most precious thing they have, you see. And so he came not, uh, not to use a word that uh, makes some people feel uh, squeezy a little bit. Uh, he used the word that indicates uh, priceless, priceless blessing. He is life. He is the glorious life. He is the wonderful life. And, and when he gave his blood, he gave his life. You could give his fingernails or his toenails or his hair, or, or <laughs> that wouldn't be life. But when his blood came forth, that was his life given that you might live forever. And we should accept it uh, from him on that, on that consideration that he is giving his life for us, that you and I might live uh, forever. Now, this atonement uh, had to be without blemish. It was an atonement for transgression. We read in Leviticus 1 and 4, it says, And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make an atonement for him. And so when he came uh, with this offering, it was big business. <laughs> it was real business. He came to get his sins removed. He came to get his transgressions taken away. Maybe he had lied. Maybe he had cheated. And we don't know what he may have done. Uh, but he came to have his, his sins forgiven. And this, this, this animal was offered in his place. And the life 
of this animal was offered in his place that he might receive forgiveness of sin. In the Lord Jesus Christ, we have that symbol fulfilled and that type uh, brought into reality to where the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled totally and pleased God that it was a sweet savor unto God Almighty. He said, I accept it. I accept sins forgiven, and I accept this person as if he had not sinned. God is a great, loving God. He is a good God, and he wants to love you and to bless you and to take away your sins. Christ has already offered uh, his offering. There can be no more offerings. Uh, there, there can be no other way. This is the finality. If you ever go to heaven, you will go there through the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the door, <laughs> and you can't get in any other way. He says, I am the way. Not, not a way. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And the only way that you can find the way is through the Lord Jesus Christ. The only way you can find the truth is through the Lord Jesus Christ. The only way you can find the life with a capital L is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he fulfilled all of the, what we call Old Testament, the first covenant. He fulfilled the total in every way in order that he might be your Lord and your Savior. Aren't you glad for that? So whether you're Jew, uh, or whether you're uh, Muslim, or, or, or whether uh, you are a Catholic, or Protestant, or, or Greek, or Armenian, or whatever you might be, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ has an answer for you, that he is the fulfillment of the promises of God made in the Old Testament, and that he is the supreme sacrifice, and has fulfilled all sacrifices, and that he is ready now to take care of every need, every problem, every sorrow that you may have. Are you ready for him? He is ready uh, for you. And so uh, this uh, sacrifice uh, was related to an atonement uh, for the washing away of sins. This burnt offering uh, was substitutionary. Uh, uh, it began with Adam, you know. Adam had no way to clothe himself. All he knew was he was naked. All, all, he, all he knew uh, was that he was afraid. The Bible says he was afraid. All he knew that he, he was hiding. All he knew was he was terribly embarrassed. All he knew was he couldn't afford to see God anymore. He hid himself in the bushes. He couldn't see God anymore. And then God took uh, two little lambs. We don't know what animal he possibly took. Uh, but he took the life of these animals and, and possibly made an altar right there and showed him how to make it because he had to be taught how to make an altar and how to make his offering. And God took the skins of those two little animals and, and God covered his nakedness with them. And he was, made, he was made clothed. And from that day until this day, God has always made a way for transgression. God has always made a way for your transgression. Uh, and, and he has a way right now for your transgression. Uh, you are not beyond God. You are not too far from God. He has made a way for your transgression. And so these offer were for the re remission of sins. It had to, the, the, the offering had to be without blemish. That was the Lord Jesus Christ. It had to be for transgression. It was substitutionary. You cannot save yourself. Jesus Christ has already paid the price for your salvation. The burnt offering had to be voluntary. Christ wanted to give his life. His, his life giving to you and to, and to me was a voluntary situation. Nobody made him do it. He wanted to do it. He gave himself for you and for me. Now, there were four animals that were used uh, in the offering. The first there uh, was the ox, and it represented uh, the, the servant. And then the second one that was used was a sheep. In Levit Leviticus 1 and 10, it says, and if, and if his offering be of the flocks, namely of the sheep, for a burnt sacrifice, he shall bring it a male without blemish. Christ was known as the Lamb of God. He is still known as the Lamb of God. In Isaiah 53 and 7, it says of the Lord Jesus that he was oppressed. This was prophetic. He was oppressed. He was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb uh, to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his sharers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. And, and so he fulfilled so magnificently the offering of a sheep before the Lord. And in this, he showed himself as one that would, that would give the offering and, and that he would uh, uh, not open his mouth, he would not fight back, uh, he would not resist, that he would freely 
and magnificently uh, give himself. The third animal that was used in the burnt offering uh, of the Old Testament was that of a goat. In Leviticus 1 and 10 again, it says, And of his offering be of the flocks, or of a goat, for a burnt offering he shall bring it as a male without blemish. Jesus Christ was a sinner who was numbered with the transgressors. Because when we think of the goat, we think of that which was, uh, you know, that's difficult to deal with, that's wild in its nature, and, and uh, will hit and, and fight uh, the other others. Jesus Christ was numbered with the transgressors. He was, he was, he was uh, crucified between two sinners. He was the only godly person up there. <laughs> and that he was numbered with the transgressors. And that is fully, uh, that is fully appreciated uh, in, the, in the great offerings that were offered at that time. The fourth, the fourth of the animals that could be offered for sacrifice was uh, something of a dove or a pigeon. And the pigeon, of course, is of the dove family. And Leviticus 1 and 14, if the burnt sacrifice for his offering to the Lord be a fowl's, then it shall be his offering of turtle doves or young pigeons, uh, which are, are very closely related. In, in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 26, it says, For such an high priest became us who is holy, uh, who is harmless, who is undefiled, he is separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. In, in the fourth sacrifice, that of the dove, it is a symbol of his innocency and of his mourning, and of his love in, in that of the dove. It is, is, uh, it is so beautiful that he comes to us in, in great love and, and in tears. If you have a problem, he, he commiserates. He moves into your sorrow, he moves into your hurt, and he moves into your needs there. You say now, uh, uh, who, who, uh, who, who could give these very sacrifices? Well, if you were very wealthy, you could give an ox, you see. And, and if you were not so wealthy, you could give a lamb. And then if you were not so wealthy, you could give a goat. You were coming down in value all the time. And then if you were very poor, you could give uh, the, the pigeons. Now, you will notice, and this is very significant, that when Jesus was born, that in Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 24 through verse 34, uh, that the parents of Jesus came and offered two turtle doves. Uh, when, they, when they came to present the Lord Jesus before the altar, because you see, in, in the Old Testament, the, the first son that was born to you had to be offered unto the Lord, saying, Lord, this is your child. You can use this child. Uh, you can, uh, he will be a minister or whatever you want him to be. We give him unto you. And that was the law of the Hebrews. And so uh, when they came to make their offering on the eighth day of his life uh, unto the Lord and to dedicate him unto the Lord, that's what he brought. And uh, this was what we call the poor person's sacrifice. And the man or the woman could not offer a lamb, had, didn't have that much money, and, and, and couldn't offer an ox for sure, which would be worth a lot of money, uh, then uh, he could bring a dove. You know, I'm so glad that God made a place for all of us. And, and uh, it, it's wrong for us, to, you know, to plead anything, to either plead poverty or to plead wealth, because really all that we have is given to us of the Lord. <laughs> all that any of us have is given us of the Lord, and we should thank Him for it. And if we want more, we should come to the Lord and say, say, Lord, I, I would like to be a custodian of a little more. I, I would like to be, a, I, I would like to be a, a, a servant for a little more. And, and the, the Lord understands that. But it, some people, when they get more, they go to hell. They, they use it on themselves. And, and whatever God has given us, we're the servants of the Lord, and it doesn't belong to you. It's loaned to you. And you, sh you should realize that and recognize that. Now, in Luke 2, 34, it says, And Simon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, the child is set uh, for the fall and rise against, uh, again, of many in Israel, for a sign which shall be uh, spoken against. And, and here he was speaking of the, actually, the crucifixion of our Lord, uh, when he would give his life to fulfill all of the, all of the altars, all of the offerings, in the, entire, in the entire Testament. His own parents could only afford the very smallest of an offering that would only cost a few cents at that time. And, and they brought their offering, and they were received, and all the temple was rejoicing in it. And so that's the story of the burnt offering of the Old Testament, that it was a male, uh, that, it was a, uh, that it was voluntary, 
and that it would remove your sins uh, from you. Lord, we pray that you will bless our neighbor right now and help them to know that Christ is the fulfillment of all things and the completion of all things. And we say thank you for all that he has done uh, to make us uh, ready for the presence of the Almighty God in heaven to live with him forever. So keep us day by day, and we thank you for it. We love you for it. 